Hello. <coughs> I'm dying. Hello, and welcome back to IHH Media After Dark. We're here again with Harem. And I can't move because I'm waiting for. Thought I was waiting for the singer. Cecilia may be on vacation, but a player called Altan has stepped up to take her role with her his own commission series. Check it out on. What? Uh, what? There are many changes to the character skills and combat, so uh, What is any of this? Okay, that was weird. You good? You are waiting on the beach when you see Samantha approach wearing a very revealing bikini and a bag thrown over her shoulder. She looks at you in annoyance. But I never picked up the ring. I don't get it. I haven't picked up the sexy ring. Who are you? Where's Lewis? Can't the stupid fishmongers of the village do anything right? I want to go back home. But where everyone doesn't stink up fish. Donna glares at Samantha. You put on your most harmless smile. <clears throat> Lewis has had an emergency come up and can't make it today. He asked me if I could take you back to the mainland instead. Samantha scarfs. What kind of emergency, see? The same fish will be in the same water tomorrow. Doesn't matter. I guess any peasant can pilot a boat. It don't seem to stink as much as the rest of them. Throwing off her hair, the hair hair off her shoulders. She shoves her bag into her, your hand and walks towards the boat. Hopefully it won't be as chatty as Lewis. I'll pay you the same double if you can keep quiet during the trip. I've had a hard enough time in this grubby little town and all I want to do is lay in the sun and dream of proper city. Samantha starts walking to the boat. As she walks away... You take your bag and lead Donna towards the boat. As you prepare for casting off, that boat seems disproportionately big now. Smith lays out in the bow and closes her eyes. Donna starts to assist and quickly proves she's more comfortable with piloting the boat than you are. In just a few moments, the, fishery, the fisher's island is fading away. Donna looks at you. Let's see, it was southern. Can I do southern again? I can't hold the accents. Can you talk the hell, master? I want to take care of Samantha. Curious is what she means. You grab the till and Donna walks to the sleeping Samantha, kneels by her head and closes her eyes. A soft blue glow emanates from Donna's hands. Placing her hand on Samantha's forehead, the blue glow seeps into Samantha. Samantha murmurs briefly and then quaintly. What you just do? It's a can trip that I... Learn from our last healer. It puts her into a deep sleep. We'll be able to get her back to your base and she won't wake up at all. Figured it's better than her struggling when she wakes up. You're a mage? Why didn't you tell me? Mages are rare in my land. Very few are born with the ability to see spirits. Even less say sane enough to master them. No, Master, I can't see the spirits, thank the gods, but I can feel my own energy and focus it. Use it to heal and perform minor tricks like that. When I was tested, the Namus said I didn't have that gift. Namus, test? You're about to ask more questions, but you see the island approaching quickly. You let Donna focus piloting the craft while you check on Samantha. She's completely out of it. As the boat lands, you carry Samantha into your base. I don't know if this calls for censoring or not. You carry Samantha into the cell. Even as you strip her, she doesn't wake. As you look down at Samantha's naked form, you decide to be safe rather than sorry and handcuff her. How long before she wakes, Donna? Maybe a few hours, master. She smiles seductively at you. I think I know a way you could pass the time. Um... Oh. Okay. 
Yeah, stuff's happening to Ra. <laughs> Uh, I'm not reading any of this. It's not that I'm not saying it's a prep. I'm just not reading it. It's, it seems there's a lot of text here. A lot of text. Wow. Whoever thought... You ever thought sex would have so much text? Later in the day, you begin to hear screaming from inside the cell. Samantha must have finally woken up. With a smile, you grab the keys and calmly let yourself in. When Samantha sees you, her eyes go wide. Evidently, she's more angry than afraid. How dare you do this, May? Do you know who I am? When I tell Rat and the Governor what you've done, they'll execute you all for sure, you see? And burn this stinky village to the ground. She continues to harangue and threaten you with, as you will. You remember the angel's words, women who... What angel? There's no angel! Curious to see how far... Oh, you mean... When... What? What? Wait, when was there an angel? Yeah. This story took a weird turn. Weirder than before. I just want to get back to the story. Well, she's fighting your... You're trying to make her part of your harem. Apparently it's out of ring now. Apparently the story changed and it's on my cock. Samantha's a singer and in combat she'll be able to use her songs to motivate your side. But we haven't gotten to combat yet. Since you haven't seen any other woman worth your harem in the village, you relax in your hideout for now. Oh, well, that's, that's one of the girls. You're relaxing. Looking through the books of the old bearer of the ring, okay, now it's the ring again, when you hear a shouting match between in the middle of the kitchen, before you even have time to set the book down, you see Samantha come storming out down behind her. Master, master, put, God, I can't keep voices. Master, put this place in their place, see? The stupid colonials, colonists can't even follow simple orders. Colonists, colonists, you suck up, bitch. See, isn't some colony of Rattan. It's an independent na- Wait. Sweet Southern Molasses. Under the Rattan Army conquered. I follow Master because of who he is. I don't obey you. Let's figure out. I, I can't have- I can't have you two fighting like this every time there's a disagreement. And over something so petty. Donna, you're a great cook and enjoy it. Why isn't it an issue that you cook for all of us? I don't mind cooking food for everyone, but I won't be ordered around by some rattan. She's your slave, same as I am. I'm happy to serve you, but that bitch can't give me orders. Like, you know how to do with yourself. I didn't tell you what to do, see? And once Master has a harem full of slaves, he won't have time to run all the small details. Leaders like him need to focus on bigger plans. Enough, both of you. I haven't been here long enough to understand half of what's going on, but it's clear that we do need some order around here. Samantha does have a point. Donna, you can organize the household. Make sure we have enough food and everyone has what they need. Things like chores, you two can split up. But you ask for help, not demand it. Understood? Donna smiles and curtsies. Samantha, your singing will be useful to me later on. So, oh, that's me maybe now. So practice that you... But I'll put you in charge of the women in my harem. Supervise them, making sure they get what they need to get done what gets done. Yeah. Both of you need to treat each other and any other slaves I capture with respect. If I ca catch either of you abusing your authority, I will punish you harshly. Are you, are we understood? 
Now kiss and make up. We have to start preparing for... Um, this seems not needed. Up. Uh, get more text. When things get sexual, there's a lot of text. That's how you know this game's going. Mm-hmm. Alright, enough sexual text. I tried to leave, but there's more sexing text. Yeah, I'm trying to leave. I actually gotta get in the boat. All right, and we'll find out what happens after these few words from our sponsors. Oh, she's drunk? We're helping her home. Or if this is like any porno I've seen, this is not helping her home. Did we roofie her? Oh, um, yeah, so drunk. <laughs> um, she is completely passed out. Um, so this could this could only go one of two ways. Well, okay. Are there, maybe we're oh, just it's a, a couch, and he put or, no, it's oh, a bed. Uh, well, he put her to bed, so. All right, let's go find new worlds to explore. There's a great big adventure before us. Chapter two. Duh! Warriors of Might and Magic, Elba. I guess I don't get to go to Elba. With Donna taking the rudder, you easily sail to the mainland, the territory that she calls Elba. Spread out before you, Dada are small villages. The only noteworthy town is Elin to the northwest. No, I want to see the villages too. Ooh, a dark, gloomy clay lies ahead. A stench of decay wafts from its entrance. And you can hear the sound of animals within. Having absolutely no reason to go inside, you do not. No, I do. Uh, why don't I put that there? It's getting late, and in the distance, you see a pair of travelers in a large cart. As you get closer, you see that it's a middle-aged man leading an attractive woman pushing the cart. Considering the weight of the cart, it must be a challenge. As a man spots you, he waves you over. The woman releases the cart and it falls in behind him, docile. Low traveler. How goes your journey this fine night? Good. Traveling to Aline, taking a bit of an adventure on our way to Rata. It pr it's proving to be a long journey and it's getting late though. Not sure if this area has an area to travel in at night. We are in a fairly safe area. Mountain Glory has been having issues with an orc band, but haven't heard of any issues in Italy above for years. But this does seem to be a good spot to camp for the night. Join us. You notice that he seems fixated on Donna, eyes rarely leaving her assets. I am Hore. And this is Cindy. Been doing a trading run for far coasts, all the way to Corsix for years now. Heading back in that direction. Seeing Cindy in the size of the cart, you glance over at Hore. Why not have mules? She has been slowing you down, and what you gain in trade seems like it offset the cost. Heh. <laughs> mules are far less enjoyable to watch push a cart, though. She's a voluntary slave, serving me in exchange for safe passage. Some missionary nonsense. Her vows prevent her from speaking until she gets to the capital. There's a good camping location at a few minutes from here. Why don't you join us for the night? You feel Samantha tug at your sleeve, trying to get your attention. Good company is hard to find out here. That sounds like a good idea, George. Don is my household slave. She can pair us a good dinner. Wrapping your arms around Samantha, you let George lead the way as she leans in close. Something isn't right here, see? Cindy's wearing a slave collar. You look at Samantha blankly. It's infused with magic to force servitude. Only the army is allowed to have them. They're very illegal, see? You nod. We need to find a way to get her alone, then. 
follow my lead. As you get to Jorge's camp, you send Donna off with Cindy to prepare dinner as the rest of you relax around the fire. Samantha runs, rubs your back. Forgive my boldness, sir and lady, but I seem to be rather smitten with your slave. Is there any chance that I could rent her services for the night? I can pay well. Just tell me what it would take. Samantha leans in close to you. I know how much a bit of cleanly and blood gets you excited. And it's been a long time since we've had a bit of fun. And it was like two scenes ago. Why don't you just swap slaves after dinner? We'll all have fun. Jorge's jaw drops. A wife like that? Sir, I'm jealous. But that would be more than a fair price. Cindy's vows are for silence, not celibacy. You'll find that she's more than willing to do whatever told. You doubt if Donna would be comfortable with being whored out so soon after being enslaved. However, Cindy would make a solid addition to your harem. Saying you need to talk to Donna first, you leave them at the camp and pull Donna away a bit. Donna, I need you to do something. Cindy will make a fine addition to my harem, and Jorge is offering trade time with her in exchange for you. I need to keep them little eyes hit two heads. Oh, master, I don't want to be a prostitute. When I said I'd serve you, I didn't mean as a whore. Please don't ask me to do this. Try to convince her, Commander. Well, I'm a pretty awful person in this game. Well, Commander. Oh. Oh, I guess you're trying to convince her. Because the mouse doesn't... I'm, I'm an idiot. Samantha says that Cindy's wearing a slave collar. Some kind of magic that keeps Cindy obedient. We need to get George away from her long enough and see if we can remove it before I take her. Donna still looks hesitant. You, you won't be a whore, Donna. A whore sells her body for money. You're using your body to further my holy quest. Yeah, that's what this is. To enslave a... To save a woman enslaved against her will. Do you think you can do that? Donna gets a curious look on her face. So I'd be doing some kind of agent, serving my master and see- Yeah. No, Donna. We can choose how you want to keep him occupied. However, he'll be expecting sex. I won't be close enough to defend you, so be careful. Can you do this for me? Secret agent, Donna will do as you command, master. I'll distract Jorge long enough for you to figure out how to rescue Cindy and take her for your holy quest. Smiling, you lead her back to the camp. She forces herself to look ch chastened and obedient. Jorge looks up at her with a So are we good? Cindy will do whatever you want as long as Donna do, will do what I want. Rather than smiling, you give Jorge a firm yet civil glare. I want to make sure we understand something first. I don't treat my saves with cruelty, George. And Donna isn't fully broken in yet. She will serve you, but there are limitations on what she's willing to do. And you have to respect those if you want this trade. I'm not looking. I'm not looking to have a chat here, Miss Sorrell. <laughs> that body was made to pleasure a man, and that pleasure is what I want. If she isn't willing to put out, I don't see any reason to let you experience Cindy. Anna gazes towards him, doesn't waver. My love belongs to my master. So does my pussy. But if you let me, sire, I'm sure I can bring more than enough pleasure to you and make it worth the trade. Jorge smiles. Good enough for me. He quickly rises to his feet, roughly grabs Donna's elbow, and begins to pull her towards the fullest. She resists for a moment, but then lets herself be led to the camp. As they are leaving, you shout, George, if you hurt her, you will have me to answer to, and you will not enjoy the results. You look down at Cindy, quietly kneeling by the fire with a look of resignation in her face. As soon as Jorge is out of sight, Samantha rushes over to Cindy. Don't worry, you little child. I see. We're here to help you. Cindy's face lights up with hope as she hears Samantha, but doesn't say anything. She frantically reaches into a hidden fold in her belt and hands Samantha a few pieces of paper. Samantha brings them over to you, and you both read them. <clears throat> Home it may concern. To whomever reads this note, I am not a slave of my own free will nor of any legal status. I was on a pilgrimage to the capital when I saw his camp. Fearing bandits, I asked if I could spend the night, but in my sleep he attached this horrible collar to me. 
He uses this collar to bind me to him. If I resist his commands, pain courses through my body until I obey. I cannot resist that kind of agony, so I must obey. He uses me for his pleasure as his whore and as his slave. If I fail, I am tortured again. He has forbidden me to speak, so I must write this note and hope that to find someone to give it to. Please help me take this collar off so I can be free again. I will give you anything you want. Do anything you want if you will just help me. We look at Samantha. We need to take that collar off before I can do anything else. See if you can figure out how to remove it. Samantha rushes over to Cindy and kneels behind her. Lean forward. Say, let me check to see if there's a lock and see if we can't get it off. Cindy smiles as she does so. But the instant that Samantha touches the lock, Cindy bursts and starts screaming through clenched teeth. Hmm, there must be some magic to prevent us from tampering with it, master. Without that key, removing it ends up killing her. We can't risk it. Look in the words. Why don't we just kill Hori and take the key? If he's in possession of something illegal, no judge will convict us. That's not how any of this works. Cindy seems to panic and starts pulling you back, desperately whining. Samantha looks at Cindy, then to you. Must be some kind of part of the magic. If the binder is injured or killed, the magic might be made worse. And this is you hear, or bellow an orgasm. Um. Uh, this came out of nowhere. Samantha turns to Cindy. We will find a way to help you, but if Hori comes back and sees us just talking, he'll get suspicious. Follow my lead. Uh. Oh, okay. So it's also a ring, but it's also my cock, apparently. Jorge looks stunned as he sees the display. That's not what I would have done, but... Yep, okay. You all return to the fire for chat for a while longer, but then call it a night. The following morning, you resume your tra travels, and you let Donna read the note that Cindy gave you. All right. How do I... How do I save in this game? Or does it just always auto-save? Anyway. All right. That does it for this time on IHH Media, After Dark.